Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Previously, we began the trial here in this game's fourth case, and we got one single cross-examination in before, um, all six members of the jury, they unanimously vote voted guilty. So now we're going to have to invoke that antiquated law and try and persuade them. Uh, that's how it goes sometimes, huh? And also, one thing before we begin. Earlier, I said that the defendant here, Sosuke Natsume, was a real person who actually lived in history. But even when I was saying that, I apparently failed to grasp just how notable the man was. His face is on Japanese currency, and his works, being an author, are taught in schools to children. Damn. That's popular. <laughs> and in hindsight, that really makes his depiction here in this game as being a neurotic, nervous gremlin shut-in just really funny. <laughs> anyway, I suppose we should begin. I have to tip the balance of those scales the other way. I have to turn this around. Somehow. Hmm. Those are the eyes of Quarry, not, what, not yet willing to give up and die. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial. Rights of the defense written into antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Call it antiquated if you will, but it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a summation examination if it so chooses. Very well, Counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with the summation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that Nipponese whippersnapper and his Ancus refusal to throw in his alley. Ancus? Ancus? I've never heard that one. Very well then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. Time to turn them against each other. For pity's sake, that little Nipponese oddity already admitted it himself, didn't he? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why, it can only have been the victim. The man wouldn't have gone round the houses on his way back from the bookshop, not in winter. So the poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. I really don't care. Can we just wrap this up now? Got work to be doing. Uh, your books. Yes, ni nice shop, that. But Bourbon's books. <laughs> no, not worth a visit. Hmm. <laughs> With only minor exceptions, the reasons for finding the defendant guilty are all too clear. <laughs> okay, well, number six didn't really f seem to have any reason. When the stabbing occurred, the only two, pe two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant then fled the scene. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt now. Ugh, oh, why did he have to run away like that? And how are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How can I possibly make a case for the defense? Mr. Naruhoto, this is no time for grumbling. If we want to force the trial to continue... Yes, I know. I have to turn the tide. I must make the jurors change their mind. Well, four of them, at least. Exactly. 
We have no choice but to forge forward. You have the floor, Council. Begin your summation examination. Yes, my lord. I just need to keep this trial going somehow. Whatever it takes. Come on, Ryunosuke, you can do it. Hell yeah. I might. For pity's sake, the little Nipponese oddity already admitted it himself, didn't he? Hold it! Um, excuse me, but... Aren't you... Yes, that's right. I was in the witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face. Or the sight of it, anyway. If I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right. After the gold rush down under, I came back to London to work. And it was all going swimmingly until you started fossicking around. Bruce Fairplay was a man of repute. Sorry? Don't think I've forgotten how you treated me the other day. You had me and that young hatter pegged as criminals. Oh, well, you know, water under the bridge. Now there's all sorts of rumors buzzing around, and the police have been badgering me non-stop. If I could turn back the clock... Well, anyway, I don't know about the Hatter, but at least I'm in the clear now. And free to make up my own mind about who's guilty and who isn't. Ah, uh, thank goodness. Alright, maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind, given our awkward history. Oh dear, I wonder what's become of Mr. First now. If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why, it can only have been the victim. Hold it! You're right that, at the time of the incident, the defendant admits to having seen someone wearing a green overcoat walking ahead of him. Well, quite. That's precisely my point. Clearly that someone wearing green was the victim. And clearly that funny little Nipponese man with the disturbing mustache is the culprit. But let us not forget, madame. The defendant vehemently denies attacking the woman. Why, of course he does. If he admits to stabbing her, his life is over. The man is obviously a liver-faced coward. Honestly, claiming the woman simply collapsed before his eyes. Liver-faced? But if that's a lie, as you're suggesting, do you not think he would have concocted something more credible? Oh, I really couldn't say. After all, you are foreign. Who's to say what goes through your funny little minds? Wow! Fuck you! I could tell you what's going through my funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it. I do declare the man has already made the admission. He himself has stated that there was nobody else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could possibly have committed this awful crime. Ugh. If no one else could have done it, the accused must be the man. Really, it couldn't be more simple. Your argument is compelling in its simplicity, I must admit. Oh my, you are too kind, my lord. That went well for her. The man wouldn't have gone around the house on his way back from the bookshop. Not in winter. Hold it! But you can't deny that there are other routes Mr. Natsume could have taken back from your books. Oh, yes, like you drew on the map, you mean. What was it? Calabash Road or something? Precisely. But it seems to me that what counts is whether the little Japanese fellow actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. And at the moment, there is no proof that shows he did, is there? Well, yes, that's true as well. 
And as I understand it, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? Well, yes, that's annoyingly true. Winter nights are dark and cold, so the way I see it, you'd want to get home as quickly as possible. Well, yes. <laughs> Why is all this true? So really, the only thing that makes sense is that he went home along Briar Road. Ugh! I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I have given it a lot of thought, you know. I didn't just make up my mind on a whim that he did it. I mean, if there was some logical reason why he might have gone the Calabash Road way, it'd be different. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honest, I would. Huh. A reason why Sosuke-san might have taken the longer way home. Yes, a good reason. I don't imagine you'll be able to sway this young man's opinion without one. Hmm... We'll come back to you. So the poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. Hold it! Whatever is the matter, young man? You're the wife of Mr. Garadeb, aren't you? The landlord who rents Mr. Natsume his room? The master's wife? Where do you get your ideas, sir? I'm the maid. The maid, you understand? Mm-hmm. She's keeping up that charade. Ah, oh, this is going to be awkward. Um, why didn't you mention this yesterday? That you'd been selected for the jury in this trial, I mean. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you see. It was in the letter I received. The instructions were very clear, so I'm afraid I had no choice. I see. Anyway, Mr. Natsume, the defendant, takes lodging in your... master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. Although he's only been in a little over a week now. And in that time, surely you must have taken stock of his character. Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit a crime such as this? Oh my goodness me, yes, he's just the sort. Oh, come on. What? Spending all his time in that dark and dingy room, sporting that unscrupulous mustache. Man never speaks, and don't get me started on those shifty eyes. All the neighbors are talking about him. I've heard them, you know. People think he must be building a bomb in there or something. Oh dear, poor Mr. Natsume. How could people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm, nothing more. Well, you just called him a worm, so... Anyway, I'd better be careful about inviting this maid to speak. She said, she said enough damning things already. I really don't care. Can we just wrap this up now? Got work to be doing. Hold it! A man's life is on the line here, sir. This will take as long as it takes. Don't get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line too, and so is my family's. Ah. Oh. The likes of you wouldn't understand, but a laborer like me can't afford to take time off. If I don't work, I don't eat. Neither do the wife and kids. Oh, I see. That must be very hard. I go to the union every morning to find out what needs doing. If you're late and the work's taken, it's tough. This time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left, right, and center. They're after cheap labor to get the roads dug up to fix it. It's a hard slog from dawn till dusk it is. So you were out digging up the roads on the day of the incident as well, were you? Hmm... I wonder if this is the reason that the number three was looking for. That's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just around the corner from where it all happened. By that old bookshop it was. What? Another coincidence? 
That's right. Meerschaum Street it was. Meerschaum Street. On the map, Mr. Naruhoto, there are only three named streets. Jure number five, I need you to add that information to your formal statement, please. What's the point in that? Can we just get this business over with now? Please, sir, it's important. <sighs> Fine, do it then. On the day it happened, I was digging up Mirsham Street from dawn till dusk. Hold it! So, if I understand correctly, you're a day laborer and you were doing road maintenance that day. That's right. Like I said, you get a lot of burst gas and water pipes underground in the middle of winter. It's the only time of year fellows like me can actually make a few bob, and I'm missing out today. And when you say from dawn till dusk... Well, the work has to be completed within the day, see? No coaches or pedestrians can pass while it's happening. I wonder if I could trouble you, sir, to mark on the street map the exact location of the works you were carrying out. Give it here, then. Let me have a look. Alright, let's see, then. Hey! Here we are, Meerschaum Street. Yes, it was just here, like. It was a tidy dig, I can tell you. We had to get through all the drifts of snow that had frozen solid. And at what sort of time did you finish the work? Well, we started in the morning, and we can't have finished before, go before gone six, I'd say. That's an hour of wiggle room. The snow had stopped coming down, but it was long past dark for sure. That means the road work was still going on when Miss Green was attacked at around five o'clock. Road works on Meerschaum Street, huh? Uh, your books. Yes, ni nice shop, that. But bourbon books. Um, no, not worth a visit. Hold it! Uh, Sorry, fold it, you say? Fold what? Uh, no, no, what I said was, hold it. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're, ta you're all talking about. Oh! And at what time did you visit your books on the day in question? Well, I was picking out books in there all afternoon, and it would have been just before five that I left. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. Just before five, you say? Exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh, yes, no mistake there. I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry. Not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Well, I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on the ice and donked my head. It's always worse after the snow stopped falling. That's when it's most slippery. Knocked myself clean out, I did. I really thought my number was up. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road? That's right, I live in Cornpipe, you see. Heading down Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your books. Juror number six, I must insist that you add that information to your formal statement. It may very well be extremely significant. Uh, uh, sorry, extremely sick. No, 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 I'm quite all right now. It sends a shiver down my spine to hear the members of the jury so convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt. But I can't help feeling that some of their opinions are rather subjective. I agree. It's the relevance of what some of them are saying that sends a shiver down my spine. 
Still, at least some of their assertions don't actually incriminate Mr. Natsume of anything. That's something. You must use that to our advantage, Mr. Naruhodo. Cunningly. Yes, you're right. Let's listen to the jurors again, carefully. And if any of their assertions are at odds, I'll pit them mercilessly against each other. Yes, don't hold back. Pit them all against each other. Right, so... Might be able to get something out of Mr. Six later, but... Three and five? There's beef here. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop not in winter. Unless there was a reason for him to do so. On the day it happened, I was digging up Meersham Street from dawn till dusk. Objection! Those two statements are clearly at odds with one another. At odds, Council. Explain yourself. Please, don't point. It wasn't me, I swear. Uh, what? I just want to get this done and dusted. Well, juror number three? Oh, uh, me, sir? W what do you mean? Juror number five's words just now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on our map of the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited this bookshop to purchase a number of second-hand books. And on the same day, we now know that there were works being carried out on Meersham Street, making it, in, making it impassable. Which means that the defendant's route home could not have taken him along Meersham Street and down Briar Road. Oh, yes, of course. What, what do you think, sir? Well, yeah, yes, you can't argue with that, really, can you? You must have had a good two yards or more of the pavement up. Every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. Yes, I suppose he must have. I, I suppose that must be right, eh? Jordan number three, you said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop, but we see now that he had no choice. Yes! My lord, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may. Yes? I, I don't think I'm in all... I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. Yes, I'd like to see this trial continue so we can get to the bottom of what really happened. I like this man. He is even keeled. What about you, sir? Uh, who, me? Uh, well, all right then. There's a hole in the prosecution's argument. It should be filled in. That's what I say. He would say that. Oh, well done, Mr. Naruhodo. That was wonderful. Well, you've managed to change a couple of minds, at least. It strengthened our position somewhat. Yes. And it will prompt the other members of the jury to reconsider their stance as well. They'll be asking themselves if their current leanings are really right or not. Now, if only... If we could just identify one more clue or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting Mr. Natsume. We might be able to tip the balance completely. Yes, that's exactly what we've got to do. Van Zeek is looking to bring this trial to an early conclusion. That's what we have to prevent by whatever means we have at our disposal. Thank you, Counsel. On with the summation examination, please. Yes, my lord. I have to say not guilty at this point, so I can see where this trial goes from here. 
Mr. Five has to say. Whether it's digging up roads or digging up the truth, you've got to see it through to the end, haven't you? Fair enough. So that leaves four others. Hmm. So he did actually go through with amending his statement. I slipped over that evening myself on Calabash Road. I knocked myself clean out, you know. God damn it. <laughs> it just clicked. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Oh my god. It really occurs to me, this man here, he has the exact same body type and green coat as the victim, Olive Green. Oh my god. Oh my god. No way. Mr. Natsume said that he saw the person in front of him, who, is, who he's about to overtake, suddenly fall over and just not go... Just, just not... Just stop moving and... So he panicked and he fled home. This whole time you assumed he was talking about the body that was found on Briar Road, but... For the love of God, he... No. No, Natsume probably saw juror number six just fall over, unmoving. Wait, no. Wait, no, there's a huge hole in that. This is Briar Road. This is Olive Green with the blonde hair. Wait. That, that hat. They have the same hat! That is a hat, right? Okay, but how did Natsume's books get here near the Briar Road incident? Oh, sweet lord in heaven. Oh, jeez, this is stupid. In the best way, I mean... This is stupid in the best way. The best classic Ace Attorney way. Oh, this is so stupid. I love it. Oh. Right. Okay. Okay. So taking all these into account. Um. If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, what well, can only have been the victim? No, there's someone else in green who could have slipped. Oh, whoops. I didn't... I meant to pit, not press. Wow, this goes on longer than I remembered. Jeez. If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why it can only have been the victim... I slipped over that evening myself on Calabash Road. I knocked myself clean out, you know. Oh. Objection. Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the juror's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about, counsel? Well, juror number two, juror number six. My, whatever do you mean, sir? I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable. It's not like I was loud or anything. There is at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of second-hand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no recollection of his return journey. 
That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are all well aware of all this. The poor young woman who was stabbed, obviously. Objection! Can we really be sure of that, madame? My, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number six's account of what happened to him that day. That same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim, who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets in the neighborhood. Oh my! My goodness, you, you mean... That's right, I'm referring, of course. To hard of hearing juror number six. Are, are you really suggesting that the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes was the jolly old gentleman on the end of the bench here with me today? That is entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim. Well, look at that. My goodness me. Uh, sorry, you need a pee? And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. On Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six, it means the defendant must have taken the lawn route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly... The crime scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not on his way home. Oh my! You idiot old man! If you hadn't been so daft as to be roaming about there, we'd have boxed this off hours ago. And really, what were you thinking wearing such a befuddling coat? What did you say to me? Is it a crime for the utterly to walk the streets these days, hmm? Is it a crime to slip over on the ice? Is it a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat, is it? Oh, what's this? My lord, I do hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but... You'd like to change your leaning, I presume. I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict if not guilty. Uh, thank you. And I would too. What? Is it a crime for to change your mind, is it? Well... That's three. And that's four. Well, that was easy. Hooray! You know, it really does figure that the two remaining uh, who are leaning towards guilty are those two assholes. <laughs> um, well, that summation examination has concluded with a rather large shift in opinion. The eyes, two. The nose, four. So the nose have it. Not guilty, they say. I think it's the eyes have it, sir. Which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. The trial will continue. Objection! Could it seem churlish of me to drink from my hallowed chalice moments after raising an objection? only to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. Oh, Lord Van Zeeks? It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited those jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Yet we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. 
Ugh. Whatever do you mean? Objection! I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed. Stalwart juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road as he claims. I believe you said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you had ex excavated, sir. That's right. Took me the whole day and they paid me a measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nippi Nipponese friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Ah, uh, uh, well, if I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Uh, me? Well, I can't say you're wrong, no. What? And did you, perchance, erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the sites of your works? Uh, I wouldn't dream of it. What a waste of time. No coaches would have had a hope of passing anyway, and we just turn any gentlefolk back when they come. Kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman, as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he would spring over a two-yard trench in his meanderings around town. I mean, two yards is six feet. To jump that distance as a recluse who barely gets out, and on icy pavement no less, that just seems absurd. Boy, I really thought Van Zeeks would go for the three books found around the collapsed olive green lady. But this is just real flimsy. And this is weird. Ah. Is that true? Is it? The incontrovertible... Incontrovertible... Inco... Undeniable truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. Oh, well. I need a drink. Hold on. <laughs> God damn it. There can be no doubt that on his way back to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume walked down Briar Road. Uh, crushed. In a single sentence. And, old man. G -g Cold man? You can talk. You say that at around five o'clock on the day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there ever... Was there a suspicious-looking Nipponese behind you at the time? Oh, I, I um, can't say as I remember... You don't remember? How about a wager, my learned friend? You say it was the old man that the accused saw. But I would lay a thousand to one against you being able to prove it. Arg! Ordar, Ordar, Lord Van Zeeks, explain yourself. My lord. If you had such a trenchant argument up your sleeve, why in the world did you not proffer it during the summation examination? Well, he can't. <laughs> I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. Ugh. But my hospitality has its limits, and they have been reached, I feel. And the cape comes off. So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. W what are you talking about? My lord. 
The prosecution requests permission to call its next witnesses to the stand. Granted. Bailiff, bring forth the witnesses. It's... next witnesses? Mr. Naruhoto, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. Alright. No matter who Van Zeeks brings to the stand as his witnesses, and no matter what they say, I believe in Sosuke-san. I know he's innocent. And I'll keep believing to the very end, until this battle is over. Huh. I'm actually stunned that neither of them are... The two people that we saw earlier. Huh. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Yeah, so what do you want to bet they're sharing the exact same scarf? Like they're... Like it, it's down on the floor and they just... They're wrapped in the same scarf, I can, I, I can tell already. Also, boy. Some real patchwork clothes, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, beat. He's on the beat, the beat cop. That's right. Oh, but the way Gregson went on about how hard the job is, like lighting lanterns and patrolling constantly. Like walking 20 miles a day, no wonder this poor man's exhausted and asleep. Constable Roly B, saw? Nothing to report on the streets, saw? Uh, oh. And I'm Mrs. Beat. Patricia's my name. Pat. Pat Beat. She's on patrol. I'm proud to say I'm this young town hero's wife. Um, what's the story here? Well, in truth, we've not been married long. Their their eyes just look so similar. I, I, I first thought they were brother and sister, but I'll take her for a word. In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary only the other day. No, no, it was your husband I was asking about. He seems... tired. Hardly surprising. Whilst being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I'm sure I've heard that before, actually. Indeed. Apart from rare days off, our gallant officers trudge some 20 miles a day, you know. They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collect taxes, survey the streets, check that meters are reading true. And they're responsible for keeping the streets clean and lighting and extinguishing our streetlights. There are a number of items on the list that don't sound much like policing duties at all. I wouldn't just be falling asleep on my feet, I'd have collapsed long ago. But it goes without saying that a policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London Bobby is a man of honor. And a man of slumber. On the day in question, this man and his wife were walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction. And they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Mr. and Mrs. Beat? That's right, sir. Isn't it, Roly? Constable Roly Beat, saw. Nothing to report on the streets, saw. 
What a great witness he's going to be. Very good. I'd like to hear your formal testimonies now, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw on the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir. Uh... It was our wedding anniversary and Rolly was taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor, then the other scattered something before running off. We ran straight over, of course, and then went for help at the nearby police box. It was definitely that Japanese man in the dock. Rolly and I both saw him clear as day. Clear as day, huh? Well, this is extremely compelling testimony, I must say. Oh dear, this policeman and his wife are claiming to have positively identified Mr. Natsume at the scene. If their testimony is true, the alternative course of events that you establish in the summation examination will be quashed. It's death knell, in fact. Because that alternative was never viable in the first place. What an unfortunate bench, uh... But chancing, and on your wedding anniversary too. Oh, I know, but I still managed to go out for the evening with my man. I thank the Lord for that. Gosh, the life of a London Bobby sounds very hard indeed. Indeed. However, this cross examination will be over in minutes. You may well have time to rest this afternoon. What do you mean by that? My learned friend, the witnesses saw the face of the man fleeing the scene. They are testifying under oath that it was without, without doubt the accused, Mr. Sosaki Natsume. And one of these witnesses is a policeman, no less. So you appreciate the gravity of the situation, I'm sure. Except that the man's so tired, his wife has to do all the talking. Enough preamble. Counsel for the defense, commence the cross-examination, please. I yes my lord. Here we go. It was our wedding anniversary, and Rolly was taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. Hold it! No time to change after work, you say? Are you also a member of the police, Miss, Mrs. Beat? Oh no, sadly not. It's a job for strapping young men only. Women, children, and the elderly can't even apply. Well... I think you can probably see why children and the elderly can't do the job, can't you? I think Roly looks ever so handsome in his uniform. It suits you down the ground, doesn't it, darling? Uh, 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 I just finished my beat. Pat and I were heading back to the station. I was actually planning on getting changed there. Is he talking in his sleep? This is creepy. Oh no, Roly, I much prefer you in uniform. Sometimes I don't recognize you when I see you in plain clothes. Oh dear, that doesn't seem healthy. Kindly adhere to the point. You were going for a meal after you had finished your beat for the day, correct? That's right, Sa, yes. Oh, I was fit to drop, to be honest, after spending the whole day on my feet. But policing is my life, Sa. As long as I'm the proud owner of this, I'll serve my city and my queen to the end. 
What's that now? I've worn cards, sir. Uh, proof that I'm a London copper. It has the noble founding principles of the Force written on it as a reminder to all us policemen of our sworn duty. To patrol the streets of London Town and uphold the peace of the common man. So, and for such a noble cause, I cover 20 miles every single day without fail and without a grumble. Because I know that the plotting of my boots is all Londoners need to hear to feel safe and secure. So, fighting crime doesn't appear to come into it, then. But, so, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. B puts up with a lot. Being married to a Bobby like me, I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. Oh, what a charming couple. Their young love is such a joy to behold. If a little over the top, perhaps. And then, kindly describe what happened next. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. Hold it! Two silhouettes? That's right. They were coming towards us, walking up Briar Road in the opposite direction. Huh. Okay. There was a rather plump figure followed by a scrawny, thin-looking man. That does sound exactly like the victim as pictured in this print, and like Mr. Natsume. Yes, unfortunately it does. And you're certain that at the time there was nobody else nearby. Oh yes, quite certain. It was dark, but there are streetlights on Briar Road, see? There was nobody else around at all. Isn't that right, my darling? Uh, 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 yes, that's right. Of course, there was a light fog on the ground. But Briar Road is dead straight, and you could easily... You could see a fairly long way down the pavement. And then there's uh, street lighting as well. I didn't see any other pedestrians. Before sleep takes a firm hold, your answer, please. Mr. Beat, are you quite sure of what you've said? Yes, sir. As a copper who spends all day, every day, keeping watch on the streets, I'd swear to it, sir. I'm as sure as my love for Patricia is true. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. Huh. They're still maintaining that there was no one else around other than the victim and the attacker. It's starting to seem like that must be how it really happened. It's beginning to seem like there's nowhere to run. Well, that didn't stop Mr. Natsume, did it? He fled the scene all too convincingly. Thank you. I believe we have a reasonably clear idea of the situation just before the incident now. What happened in the crucial moments that followed? All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. Then the others scattered something before running off. Hold it! Huh. Scattered something? What do you mean by that? Oh, well... I couldn't quite make out what it was at the time. But then when we got closer, we realized what it was. Didn't we, darling? Uh, 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 yeah, that's right. It was some old books. I see. Old books. Yes, sir. The culprit had dropped a number of them all around where the victim lay on the pavement. Indeed, as clearly pictured in this photographic print. That 
rotten Japanese man did that when he did the deed. Hold it! Let's not forget that it remains to be established that the defendant was indeed the attacker. But we saw him. It was the man in the dock without question, saw? The mustache, the hunchback, the cat-like eyes, the taut mouth, the snub nose, everything. Any more insults you want to throw in? That's right! He looked down at that poor defenseless woman with those terrifying, intense eyes. And then suddenly threw his books onto the pavement and ran away. Uh, I see. This is tough. They seem as though they're telling the truth here. May I remind the court that this unambiguous testimony comes from a policeman and his wife. Now please continue. Yes, uh. We ran straight over, of course, but then he... But, and then went for help at a nearby police box. Hold it! Was it your husband who went to fetch help? No, no, I went. I may not be a police officer myself, but I am the proud wife of one, after all. Isn't that right, my darling? Uh, 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 yes, that's right. I asked Mrs. Beat to go. I was off duty by that point. But a Bobby's never truly off duty, of course, so I felt obliged to stay and guard the scene. Very laudable, Mr. Beat. Preserving the scene of a crime is a task of considerable importance. That's why I sent Patricia, you see. I told her where to find the right police box. Um, forgive my ignorance, but what do you mean exactly by the right police box? Depends on a crime's location, you see, as to who deals with it. Where the woman was stabbed wasn't actually on my beat. So I told Patricia the way to the police box for the beat the incident fell under so she could go and report it. I ran there as quickly as I could and asked for help from the Bobby on duty. There's nothing more potent than a young couple in love working together, you know. And thanks to your swift response, the case was quickly resolved. The actions of two model citizens. Oh, please, you're making us blush, isn't he, darling? Yes, sir. Uh, what Patricia said, sir. Uh. Let's move on, shall we? It was definitely that Japanese man in the dock. Rolly and I both saw him clear as day. But surely you wouldn't have been able to see his face by the light of the gas street lamps, would you? We absolutely could. Us Londoners have exceptional eyesight, I'll have you know. Right. The light from the street lamps was more than enough. And my husband already told you that the fog was only light, didn't he? She is getting weirdly defensive about this point. Uh, yes, and what of the fog? We're famous for it across the globe, I believe. But it's an absolute menace to those of us who have to live with it, of course. Oh, it is, it is. When it's thick, you can't even see the hand at the end of your own arm. Yes, all right, I take your point. Now, could you stop shaking your husband about? The constant fog makes our eyes very sharp, you see. That's why you can tell you for sure it's certain that it was that little Japanese man we saw. Can't we, darling? Uh, 
Uh, what? Oh, yes, it was the accused and no mistake. The mustache, the hunchback, the cat-like eyes, the tight mouth, the snub nose. Unmistakable, sir? As far as this couple's testimony is concerned, there can't be any question. It was Sosuke-san they saw running away from the scene of the crime. So that's it, is it? That's their entire testimony? What do you think, Mr. Naruhodo? Well, I hate to admit it, but on hearing the testimony, it really does seem as though Mr. and Mrs. Beats saw... Mm, sorry. It does seem as though Mr. and Mrs. Beats saw what they say they saw. Mr. Natsume running away from the scene on Briar Road that day. Yes, I feel the same. So if that's true, where does it leave us? The members of the jury are sure to call for a guilty verdict after this testimony. Oh no, then what do we do? If Kazuma-sama were here... What are you trying to say? I think we would try to find a contradiction somewhere else within their testimony. What do you mean, somewhere else? Their statement about seeing Mr. Natsume is unequivocal. Calling that into question won't help. But if you could identify some other part of their testimony which appears to contra contradict the facts, you might be able to discredit them to make the jury doubt if the pair's memory of the day is accurate. Oh, right. Put simply, we must focus on finding dis a discrepancy in the... Ugh. Getting tongue-tied here. Put simply, we must focus on finding a discrepancy in these statements somewhere. If we don't, I'm afraid the trial may reach an early and unfavorable conclusion. Ugh. Why do I always seem to be so up against it? Um, Mr. Lawyer, sir, can I ask you something? Oh, yes, of course, what is it? Well, you keep asking us all these questions about everything we've told you, so... It seems like you don't believe our testimony. Is that right? Is it? Well, out with it. What? No, 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 oh, no, it's really not that at all. My husband's a policeman, remember? And I know what I saw. I remember every last detail, everything, like, like... Oh, I know. What about the books the man dropped? Okay, make it easy for me, why don't you? I could tell you the names of every single one. I could, every single one. Oh, could you? Okay, so we got the picture of M Monsieur Leacock, a meal for Gabarel, and Kenderberry Yearnings. And you dare to question how reliable my testimony is? That will do, Mrs. Beat. No, it won't do at all. That Japanese lawyer has no idea what I'm capable of. Even if I decide to forgive him for insulting us, don't think for a minute that Roly will. I, I really didn't mean to cause offense. Please put your husband's fist down. Uh, perhaps you would like the opportunity to supplement your testimony, Mrs. Beat. Might that appease you? Oh, thank you, my lord. That would settle things nicely. Wouldn't it, darling? That poor man. I could even tell you the names of the four books he dropped at the scene. Hmm. 
Not only does the photo show three books, but we have the receipt that proves he only bought three. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to show the photo here, then uh, Van Zeeks will be like, nah, -uh, maybe there's one book like behind the victim in the photo. That's when you bring out the receipt. I got the receipts. <laughs> I see how this is gonna go, probably. Um, but yeah, we'll do that next time. For now, we're running a bit over time here, so... Uh, you know, even after all this, I still think my most credible theory is that when Joan was getting in a fight with her husband about the bookmark name, um, maybe, like, she, like, freaking threw a knife out the window and it ended up lodging it into the victim's back. So Jean, jo Joan did it. But, but if that were the case, Olive Green would have to be facing into the alley for the angle to work. Which is weird. But I still swear the alleys are going to be relevant at some point. If, they're, if they weren't, why would they draw the alleys on the map? Uh, anyway, um... But well, yeah, more fun shenanigans, more fun characters. Boy, I, I, I feel for Rolly here. Uh. You know, I feel like Rolly might even be a reference to Patricia Rowland, who, you know, patrols. Pat Rowland. Uh, she she was a character from a pre a previous Ace Attorney game I played. A uh, fun character that one, very very memorable. Um, though actually I do I I do think Patricia Rowland was a fan name because it was a fan translation that I was playing. So there's that. Maybe maybe it could be a reference even still. I don't know. Uh. Well, it is comforting that I know what my next move will be. I just hope I can remember by the time I record again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I usually like to do recordings one hour per day. Uh, it's a nice healthy pace. Uh, I think. So, sometimes, sometimes I do two a day if I'm feeling really hyped, but not usually these days. Um, I do not have much more to say, so I'll just end things here before it gets too much awkward. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care.